I want to talk today a little bit about uh, problems we can have with um, getting our planes to work properly. There's nothing nicer than using a really well set up sharp plane. It makes beautiful curling shavings off the plane. It also makes your work easier. Um, but there are issues, there's one particular issue I want to look at which can make life very difficult for you. <coughs> we spend a lot of time on my uh, beginners and my uh, sharpening and fettling course looking at um, tuning a plane up to get, to get it to work to its best possible uh, performance and uh, there's one particular issue that comes up which I want to look at. Um, when you use a plane you should, the shavings could come off in beautiful curling shavings but if you've got the problem we're looking at which is to do with the chip breaker we end up with concertina shavings like that. <coughs> you quite often find this with the uh, cheaper planes that you buy from uh, uh, DIY stores and things. That the, uh, the chip breaker, which we'll look at in a minute, just isn't set up properly and that's what causes this problem. To understand the problem, we really need to know a little bit about how the plane goes gets put, is put together. So, initially you've got your cap iron, which holds the blade and the chip breaker assembly onto the base of the plane. Um, then if you can lift out the, the blade and what we call the chip breaker, which is a bit fixed onto the back there. You notice the chip breaker is always on the top of the blade. You can then slacken off the chip breaker. A bit stiff there. The best way to do that is to slide it back and turn it so you don't damage the end of the blade. And then the whole assembly is fitted onto the frog which we, we also have a look at on my courses. Uh, I won't go into too much detail on that at the moment. Um, now the problem with um, that we, we're experiencing is to do with the seating of the chip breaker. Now when you position the chip breaker it should sit, oh what's that, about just a bit more, less than a millimetre back from the uh, sharp edge of the blade. Uh, and it's to do with the seating of this chip breaker. So here's a little diagram I've uh, drawn up showing a section through the plane. So if you imagine the plane like that, there's the sole of the plane, there's the blade coming down, here's the chip breaker coming down. Now the way the, the plane works is the uh, blade will take a shaving off and the idea of the chip breaker is that it breaks the fibres of the shaving between the front of the chip breaker and the front of the mouth of the plane. And that breaking of the fibres makes the shaving curl away beautifully like that. Now the problem we have is shown here, where very much magnified obviously, where the chip breaker isn't sitting down properly onto the blade. Can you see there's a little, little uh, uh, interruption there? So when the shaving comes out, it gets trapped there. It comes out there, goes boof, and it sort of all comes out a little bit uh, messy. Uh, and it's this part that we're going to address now. Right, so I'm going to take, take apart the, the offending plane and we'll have a look and see what the problem is. Now you can see there where some shavings are getting caught underneath can you see that? They're getting stuck underneath the, uh, the edge of the uh, chip breaker and also if I, put a, I, if I put a pencil there I can feel the pencil's catching underneath the chip breaker where it's not actually coming down and creating a beautiful flat join between the back of the blade and the chip breaker so we need to address that so I'm going to take the chip breaker off <coughs> Just take that off. Oops. Now one way of checking this when you're working on the chip breaker is you can actually, I'm not sure that the camera will be able to see this, you can actually hold it up to the light and see if there's any light showing through between the chip breaker and the blade. But like I say it's quite a tricky thing to see with a cheap camera. Okay. <coughs> Right, so we now need to try and get rid of that sort of bull nose on the chip breaker. And what I'm going to do is use a, a diamond stone to try and smooth it round like that. So I'm going to work it in that way. Now the reason I'm using a diamond stone is because if I, obviously if I did this on an oil stone or a water stone, you'd end up with tram lines up and down, which we don't want. And you can see we're we're beginning to create a nice sweeping surface there, which could, should come down to a very defined edge. I also need to work on 
the flat edge here, if you look there, can you see how that's sort of going away slightly there? That will probably be the bit where those shavings were catching earlier. So what I'm going to do is work on this flat so that when we put the, the cap iron onto the back of the blade, we've got a nice flat seating. If you look at it from the side there, can the camera pick that up? Can you see how it's not actually sitting flat down onto the, the blade? It's sort of angled upwards. Right. So I'm going to now work on creating a better flat to sit down onto the back of the blade. I'm going to work it back and forwards in this way. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for an angle. Uh, how do I describe this? <coughs> the actual iron is angled slightly downwards. It's off, off the horizontal. And I'm actually using my fingers running on the surface of the workbench as a, to hold it steady. So I've got a nice flat all the way along there. It's still going away a bit there, and it also looks to me like I've still got. I don't know if you can catch the light on that. No, I don't think you will be able to. It's still slightly rounded there. I think I need to be able to sweep that down a bit more. <clears throat> okay, I've spent a bit longer working on the back of this cap, uh, chip breaker, and uh, we've got a nice flat. If you get in nice and close, we've got a nice flat all the way along there, which will sit nicely onto the back of the blade. We've still got a little bit there. Can you see that? That needs to go, or else we'll be forever catching shavings underneath, underneath it. So I'll carry on for a bit longer and report back to you. Right, so I've uh, spent another couple of minutes working on this, and we've got a beautiful flat back to the chip, uh, chip breaker now. It's a bit burry on the front there, where I've been working on it, so I'm going to do a little bit more work on the back. Right, so... Um, I think this uh, is it. we've got a nice good flat on the back of this chip breaker now. Uh, one final thing I want to do um, is to just sort of um, uh, buff up the back of this, get it nice shiny so that this, the uh, shavings can run over it nicely. So I'm just going to work it on a strop which I've dressed with a bit of auto sole. This stuff you know you can get from uh, motor spares places. Let's give it a bit of a polish up, and also you can check whether there's no there's no burr left on on the edge where we've been working this flat. That looks fine to me now, so I'll try it out on the uh, blade. Oops, put this on first. So it goes on the flat side of the blade. As I said before, what's that? Less than a millimetre back from the edge. Turn it up. Yeah. Careful when you drop it into the blade, into the plane. Don't damage the sharp edge of the blade on the metal of the plane. Put the cap iron on. Push the cam lever back. A quick feel to see where it's. Uh, Right. right, so let's see what the shavings are like. Ooh. That's rather coarse. So we're getting some nice, fine, unconcertinaed shavings. Um, they are breaking up a bit, which might indicate there's the edge of the blade isn't perfect. But I don't really want to go into that now. performing well now. And you can see how the shavings are just curling away. Beautiful all the way across. There's a little nick in the blade there which is causing that, uh, that line there I think. Okay, I hope that uh, helps with your planing. <laughs>